It's January, and what better time for a studio tour? But before I start to show you around my very messy and in working progress studio, I wanted to take a moment to talk about studios and what that word means. Often when I tell folks um, anything about my work, I mention the phrase studio, in my studio, or I will be in my studio, or my studio doesn't have enough space, or that won't fit in my studio. I get a response, probably, I don't want to say nine times out of ten, maybe seven times out of ten, of like, oh, I wish I had a studio. Oh, I can't possibly. Uh, that would never, I, oh, watch out for your biting cat. Um, <laughs> he wants to sit with me, but he's not actually super fond of me doing anything at the same time. Watch the spur. That's a studio compliment in my studio. He's not fond of me not focusing a thousand percent on him uh, while I pet him. So, but seven times out of ten, folks will say some lament about the lack of studio space that they have. It's made me think over the years about the idea of studio because I've been using the word my studio, <laughs> which I share with cats for many years since I started to claim the title of artist, since I published my coloring books, Doodle Bloom, and um, Feminism is for Everyone, a coloring book. I used my couch as a studio. That's where Doodle Blooms was created. Feminism is for Everyone was created partially in my previous studio when I finally decided, you know, the couch wasn't really big enough for the ideas that I had. And that studio was very small. It was my previous studio as my son's nursery when we moved him into the space that I'm in now. And I created Feminism is for Everyone in that space. And then 50% of it was done in this space, the space I'm going to show you today. So I've been saying to folks and saying to myself, my studio, since 2015, since before I ever had a dedicated art making space. And I think that's really important. It wasn't so much that I was claiming, <laughs> there's so much fur, that I was claiming um, possession of something I didn't have. I made it very clear that my studio space was um, DIY, which is what this one is as well. But it was about my intention that when I was in that space, first on the couch, then in the very small room next door, uh, and then now in this space, which I consider to be, and I'm very grateful for, consider to be quite a large space in comparison to everywhere else I have been that I call the studio, but of course is now becoming a little too small for me. I think it's the intention of the space that we make that makes it, will you stop? A studio or not. And in that regard, I feel like a kitchen table, a box, like not that you sit in the box, but a box that you take with you from place to place can become your studio because the studio is the space where art is made. The studio is not necessarily a space <sighs> tailor-made for your creations. A studio is a space where you make creations, and so it can be wherever it is that is in your space, that is in your life, and it may even be in your car. I've done that not very often, not very often. I get too hot or too cold really quickly, but a car can be a good space. So, and without, oh my God, I'm gonna be covered with fur. Without further ado, and now that I've made claim to, a studio is wherever you are making art. Let me show you around my DIY <laughs> studio that is always full of fur before Edward starts to bite my hand off. You're a crazy kitty. The very beginning of my tour begins at the doorway, this doorway, which doesn't have a door. It has what I call my rainbow wall because I took the door off of the frame when I moved into this space because it gave me 
uh, a whole additional area in which to work of about three by three square. Now, I occasionally lament not having a door. I do have a screen door that closes when I need to keep cats out. But obviously, this is also cat friendly, so they can come in at will. My studio does not begin with an open space. So I'm standing in the doorway now. You see this very large, old library shelf that we got when they were getting rid of them at the local university here, Texas, Lu Texas Lutheran University. And I brought one of them home. I've created a whole wall here, which creates a hallway. So even though I have no privacy because I have no door, <laughs> I do have the privacy of this barrier. And I walk out. I have a built-in in here. This is an older home and this was a part of the space. I will back away so that you can see it a little bit better. It is completely useless as a desk. It was for like very small people and my knees don't fit under there very well. So I use it in other ways. There's the hallway that you just exited from and it walks us out into the studio proper. Oh, there's Pippin. <laughs> Always cats in this space. And on the other side, here is that library shelf that I was talking about, which goes floor to ceiling. And I use it forward to backward, which I've just recently made that adjustment to my studio space. And it has meant I got, I don't wanna say 50%, but 25% more storage space. And I'll post a picture somewhere up along here to show you how I used to organize this space. I don't have art storage. I have old dressers. <laughs> this one right here, which I'm now storing all kinds of my, this is not, this is the best thing I've done so far is to have my brushes in a place where I can get them easily. This was my son's changing table when he was an infant. We brought this one all the way over from Phoenix. This is one of the first pieces of furniture we bought as a young married couple. It now houses all kinds of things and I can't necessarily open the drawers because they're not as tidy as the rest of the spaces. And you'll see that my studio walls are covered in all kinds of things. I tend to be a very chaotic and visual person. And so, oh, there's my starship and I am a huge, enormous metric fan. So that's right up there. I kind of have things everywhere. This table, this is my main art table, not again designed for art. This was our first table that my husband and I bought as a young married couple, and we've moved it around way more times than we probably should have given it was a very inexpensive table, but I love it. This shelf, which gives me more knickknack shelf, these things are just, I just love looking at stuff, but I didn't have a way to put it on my table. So we had some bricks in the backyard and some spare wood, voila a second shelf <laughs> or a second shelf a shelf on my desk my desk is not a desk like i said before it is a table how i make it into a desk is i have these old storage bins one on either side of my desk these were obviously possessions of my son when he was in high school hence all the the percussion stickers. And when I need, oh, this is hard to film and pull. When I need extra space to the side of my desk, I pull these out and they become a second surface. Really, really handy for like pallets and spray bottles and things when you're using, when the desk becomes crowded, which it's crowded right now. This is actually fairly tidy. <laughs> this table, actually I swiped it from my son and husband who like to play Magic the Gathering on this table. I'm like, nope, it's mine now because it goes up and down. It's just a card table, but it has worked wonders. I am trying to prepare my space to do printmaking <laughs> at home because I've fallen in love with printmaking. Oh, Pippin. Cats can take up a lot of my storage space, but they are beautiful creatures. So I try not to be too terribly upset about that. This piece of glass, which I'm planning to use as a home printmaker for rolling out ink uh, and keeping blocks 
that are covered with ink in a space that's not necessarily going to be too hard to clean. This came off of an old um, end table that I use in my bedroom. And I'm like, I don't care about the wood, but this glass, I can take this off of the wood and it's gonna be perfect. So again, looking around my space in my house and seeing what I can use. These are my, this used to be my son's bedroom. These are his old bedroom lamps. I didn't take them out, nor did I take out the ceiling, which Pippin, if I, I need to sit where you are, dude. Don't let me sit on your paw. The ceiling is covered with stars. And when I moved into this room, which used to be my son's room when he was in high school and elementary school, this is one of my favorite things. This is why we gave it to him when he was five years old. So I haven't taken it off. This is where I keep my easel, which is not easy to see in the whole frame. I pull this out and work on it anywhere that the light is good. <laughs> Cause as the light changed, this room has three really wonderful windows, but the light is never in the right spot. No matter how many windows you have, it's never right. So I pull this out and use it wherever. You'll notice I'm still working on this painting. I am going to finish this before summer comes. I've said it now live on camera. <laughs> You see, I have chaos everywhere in my shelves, or at least chaos to the eye that does not belong to me. I also have things that are really important to me. One of my favorite features of my studio <laughs> is right up here. It's not art at all, or not art in a traditional sense. This is my hall of heroes. So we go from uh, contemporary, so that's Ray right there, through ancient, my gosh, that's Scarlet. She's ancient. Oh, we move around from G.I. Joe to, of course, Princess Leia. I consider the DeLorean from Back to the Future to be feminine. So there you have it. We have Rose, a much maligned character, which made me totally angry because I loved her. Of course, Captain Marvel, duh. Ahsoka, my Zune, <laughs> which I love and I had to memorialize up there. It's inside the box, totally dead. I watched it turn its last turn when it no longer would share music with me. And we have Valkyrie here at the very top, not an action figure. Ah, there you go, is BB-8. So this house is old. This closet used to be much larger, but when they, tried to give it central, you know, tried. They gave it central heat and air. They cannibalized that half to put in the AC unit, which of course I'm not bothered by, except now <laughs> I don't have that closet space. It, and this doesn't open. So I create space for things that I would like to be in the dark, like all of my art paper away from heat and moisture and sunlight and cats and the various other things that I don't get into very frequently. So this is long-term storage. I swiped this from my son when he was no longer in need of plastic storage bins, but I didn't change it at all. I kept all of those little signs that he made when he was trying to organize his Thomas trains. There you can see off to the side, those are my large drawing pads. That's where they get to stay when I'm not using them. I use side spaces and sliding spaces in every nook and cranny of this space. This is my favorite sliding space right here. This is all my really expensive art paper that's too large to keep in the dark. This is where I keep my cutting mats and my art boards and I slide them out. I obviously like to stick all kinds of stuff up in my space. It doesn't make sense to other people, but it makes sense to me. Oh, now he's asleep. I'm not gonna get a chance to sit there at all today. Um, oh, hanging storage for my large me uh, measuring tools. What is this? I liked this tape. It was off of a painting I was doing and I kept it. Should I have kept it up there? I don't know, <laughs> but it makes me happy. So how do I finish this video? What do I do? <laughs> I guess just a nice slow, so nobody gets dizzy, tour. 
It's a DIY, look at me, I said it right, space where I have a cacophony. There's an SAT word for you, a cacophony of things that I think to some people would be disorganized or eesh, be clutter. But for me, this makes me calm, this makes me creative, and this makes me feel at home. Well, I was going to film the outro to this studio tour, sitting in this chair, but Pippin had other ideas. And that is the story of my life, going with the fur flow. I hope you enjoyed the tour of my studio and that if you did, give it a like, give it a subscribe and maybe share it with a friend, somebody that you know is struggling with the idea of figuring out a space where they can do their work, where they can do their art, where they can have a little bit of sacred space that's only theirs. And maybe perhaps you even got some ideas. I, I use a lot of weird, not made for art stuff in my studio practice. There's a bit of a, a magpie in me, which is ironic since I'm always surrounded by cats. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.